believe that this Congress uh, adds a huge value to uh, the international scene. Um, among the many other conferences that we go to, they're usually large scaled um, and impersonal. I think the, the nice uh, factor about this conference is uh, the camaraderie, uh, the environment in which uh, free discussion and sharing of ideas on, on a multinational level uh, basis. Uh, I think there's huge opportunity for international urologists who are un access to technology such as laparoscopy and robotics have an opportunity in their mid-career to get involved, to learn these techniques and technologies. And I think aside from the lectures and the academia, there's a huge other component of hands-on skills and laboratories which are huge adjuncts to the training of safely of these urologists in practice. Absolutely, I think there's, uh, as, as virtue of their 11th conference here, and they also have, uh, I believe it's their 30th or 33rd upcoming applied laparoscopic training. They do this some twice or three times a year, not always in Turkey, but also taking it on the road to Moscow or other uh, European countries. I think with anything, that more of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, nurturing environment, uh, more direct contact with the experts uh, on skills-based surgery is so needed. I think there's so many already large conferences, the European Association of Urology, the American Urological Association meeting, which are just so vast and really it's nice to sort of get some of the lectures, the, 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 the main sessions you can take home messages. but. In terms of skills and surgeries, particularly the, the nuances of surgeries and management of complications, this conference is so unique in, in that it allows the, uh, the audience to have a much more personal experience. So I, I definitely think there's a need for these and by virtue of the sold out attendance for 30, 35 conferences already, I, I can only see this growing. I believe that the main take home messages are the uh, ongoing growth of minimally invasive techniques. I think as urologists, we're number one, uh, all interested in new technologies. We're usually quick adopters of technologies. And I think the clear message is that there's so many new instruments uh, that adjunct to laparoscopy, robotics, and endourology. And I think that the key messages at this meeting is. You never stop learning and there's always new stuff coming down the road and the idea of sharing amongst ourselves collaboratively with research projects will only continue to feed our, our growth and, and, and leadership in, in surgical techniques. Well, the way I teach my residents and fellows is that for the first time ever we can record high definition and re replay, kind of like sports players, uh, football, uh, hockey, if you're Canadian. Uh, you can go back and look, and how did you do? What, what could we have done differently? Whereas in open surgery, that was not really the case. Uh, in laparoscopy, there was, but the two-dimensional vision. So I think the robotic platform is kind of like a computer. We call it the Da Vinci, but the robot is simply a platform in which we can add on ultrasonography, CT imaging, overlaying of, of little arrows that we can, on a second robot, show the, the, the learner where to go and, and do this safely. So I think that uh, robotic surgery, by virtue of its rapid uptake globally uh, among urologists, is, uh, is, is a true virtue of if its assistance with us to pr do better surgery in a more ergonomic environment and to be uh, a witness surgery and to record and to to, to, to learn further from our mistakes. The Da Vinci robot, I fortunately, life's all about timing, and I started my fellowship just at the peak in that environment in Chicago, where it just took over. We had a chairman who fed the program, and, and globally at the time, we were kind of the leaders in that. And you know, most people who want, uh, basically, for competition reasons, for 
uh, patient demand and, and just you know, being able to send a patient home the next day after surgery, minimal blood loss, uh, and having myself done laparoscopic prostatectomies, uh, my back, my shoulders, my elbows, my wrist all thank me today. Uh, no one really talks about that. It's sort of the, the, the you know, there's, there's always the cost advantage, uh, the patient advantage. Is there really an oncological advantage? There's still debate on that. But ultimately, the huge one, I think we're better reconstruction surgeons. We do better anastomoses. And uh, as a surgeon, uh, musculoskeletal injuries, uh, we want to think of ourselves as uh, you know, uh, uninjurable, or you know, we work through conditions as urologists uh, when we're sick. You know, we're, I'm sure you know, this audience will all agree that at some point, the average worker out there would have taken a sick day but we will continue to operate uh, unless we're hospitalized ourselves. So the robot allows that, um, that, that comfort environment where you're not stressed, you're, you're not physical stress. And I think that's a huge aspect that always gets kind of put under the rug because you know, the surgeons are expendable. You know, we don't really add that into the cost factor, but over a 20, 30 year career, I think the human body is put under less stress in a seated, comfortable position. That's a million dollar question I've been asking for a while. You know, I think zoology, we, there, it's like the, the stock market. I find there's, there's the ups and the downs. And I can think of sort of the, the last 20 years, major changes in, in urology from the penile implant to the injectable uh, penile uh, uh, cab reject to then uh, Viagra, then to uh, in terms of laparoscopy and then robotics. And since then, I can't really venture to say what, what's the next thing. I think we'll probably have some kind of image-based uh, technology and perhaps down the road even genetic uh, treatments, uh, whether it be surgical or genetic treatments. I think there's a, a clear difference in so far, at least uh, with my experience with the Turkish uh, community, is their warmth, their hospitality, and really uh, all the attention to details from location to uh, the environment to the uh, audiovisual to the uh, translation so uh, I think there's uh, a clear attention to detail and refinement that uh, is certainly uh, apparent and just as a community I find um, very humble very eager to teach and willing to teach. And some environments are not always like that. Some people are, I'm the professor, and you're the student, this is how you do it, and that's it. Whereas here, there's a, I feel they are leaders, not so far as setting up and uh, bringing to, uh, on, the, on the bus. I like to use that analogy that on the bus, they'll bring and recruit people who have vast experience, and, and they themselves are open to hearing and uh, adopting, and. Uh, to share and collaborate, I think that that's so huge. It's not uh, you know you're not coming to university. And this is how you do it, and please leave. There's that openness to work with and uh, collaborate, ongoing. So various other techniques on robotic surgery done by some of my colleagues. Um, I feel that you know. Once you've done your fellowship, you've done your own experience, you've gotten into your own little bubble. And sometimes when you come to these conferences and collaborate with international figures, uh, various dissection techniques or other instruments or uh, other approaches when the, the game gets tough, uh, I've picked up. So I look forward to applying those um, and other collaborative research from just being here and working with some of the others on uh, a few projects.